Hello and welcome to Learning Music with Pat. Today I've decided to bring in some ocarinas. I have more than I have here, but this will give you a good sample of what ocarinas are. Ocarinas are a type of instrument that go back into antiquity. They're probably, uh, could be maybe the first woodwinds that were ever constructed. And I'm going to give you a little history of them, and then I'm going to show you three or four of them, including one small harmonica. And, but I want you to understand the ocarinas are a single instrument. They're woodwinds. You blow into them. And if you get a really expensive one, they have incredibly beautiful tone. As a matter of fact, when I heard a professional play in ocarina, which is probably a lot more money than I ever paid for mine, I was hoping to be able to duplicate the sound of the ocarina that he was playing with some of my own instruments. I have over 300 instruments. There's no way that any of my instruments could replicate the sound of his ocarina, but he had a very expensive one. They started out probably in antiquity, probably in China or an Asian nation, and they were like a, a whistle. They were called a globular flute because most of them were round, and they kind of replicated myth animals. They made them in shapes that supposedly represented mythical animals that didn't actually exist except in their own culture. And they worked with them and worked with them and gradually over a period of time it started migrating. They started going into other areas of China and Asia. And when they got to, Is uh, when they got to Italy there was a man whose last name is Donati and he decided to design them, and he called them the ocarina, and that's where the name came from. The ocarina, in his language, meant little goose, and the way that they were arranged, he thought of them as looking a little bit like a little goose, so that's where ocarina comes from. Later on, of course, they appeared in other, other nations, European nations, and by the time they got to the United States, they got redesigned, and the United States started calling them the sweet potato ocarina. Now, I'm not sure where that term sweet potato comes from, but that's what they were called. It's a little different shape, a little different color. It plays so-so. So I want to start showing them to you. I, the first one I'm going to show to you is, comes from Peru. I have two of these. Now, I'm going to hold it up here where you can see it. There it is. Whoops. Let me hold it a little bit like this. This is made to be worn. This is a Peruvian ocarina. You can see that there are six holes in it. The back has a couple itself, and I'll show you the back in a minute. But they hand paint these things, and it's a cross, and it has a, a, a kind of a cord on it, and it's made to be worn, and it's absolutely beautiful. You can see in the back there are two holes for your thumbs. So what you would do is you would put your thumbs in the back and hold your fingers in the front like this. And that's how you get, that would be how you play it. There's a little place right here that you blow into it, and like there's a little labium like in the back right here. So you have this in the back, and you have the whole two holes in the back, and you have the front, which is where the artwork is, and you have three holes on either side, and you hold it like this when you play it. And it's made, as I said, to be worn. And uh, when I used to do music uh, uh, seminars, and I did quite a few of them, I used to go in and I used to wear it. Now, it's made out of clay, so it is very breakable. But I would be careful with it, and I would wear it, and I would say that I was wearing an ocarina. They, some of them are made to be worn. And this, I think, is a beautiful example of what the ocarinas are like. And you can just see, there we go, whoops. There we go. It's gorgeous. You can see very clearly the three holes to the right, the three holes to the left, and you can see quite clearly the holes in the back, two of them, and the little labium, which is on top. And then if I hold it this way, you can see a little slit in the top. That acts as a mouthpiece. A slit isn't actually very even, 
but it does work. I don't play it much. There's too much danger of its dropping, but at the same time, it is very playable, and it wasn't that expensive. I have two of these. So this is a clay made in Peru, a Peruvian ocarina. Now, this one here, the next one is a hardwood ocarina made out of wood. I'm going to hold it like this. Whoops. You can see how nice that is. It's a hardwood design. It has four holes. It has labium right here, and there are two holes in the back of it. So you have holes both in the front and in the back. And you play it, it's got the labium right here. And like the other one, if I hold it this way, you've got a little slit. And that little slit where my finger is acts as the mouthpiece. It plays, it plays fairly well. They're not easy to play, by the way. We're used to instruments that have like a six or eight uh, places to put your finger so you can play scales. You have to play scales on these things by adjusting your fingers. You might have two on one side, one on the other. The, the finger holes are different sizes to accommodate you, but at any rate, it, and you have to learn a whole new fingering pattern. But this is the hardwood ocarina, and it also does very well. It's also made to be worn. As you can see, it has a cord on it, for the, for the sake of putting it over your head and being able to wear it. And so that's another ocarina. They're all like that. Um, the smallish, the ones that I have are small and they're kind of roundish. This is the tiniest one. This is the mini ocarina. I like it very much. I know it's hard to lay there. You can see the holes. I like it very much because it's in the key of C and it's accurate. It can play a whole scale in the key of C. It doesn't miss a beat and the pitch is right on, right at, uh, very accurate. You have the four holes in the front. You have this down here that acts as a labium. Actually, the mouthpiece, I hold it like this, but the mouthpiece, if you're gonna play it, you would just lift it up like that. And you have the cord that would be just hanging down. This is a labium. These are the four holes. And you would hold it like that. There is another hole in the back right here. You can see it has a little shape of a mouthpiece from the back. This here, there's a little split, a slit in this, and that uh, forms the mouthpiece. I don't know as you can pick that up. The instrument is black and everything is kind of dark. But right here where my, my uh, finger is, there's a little slit. You blow into that. I've actually played songs on this. I did a solo. Once I was holding it up and I played the Alleluia, one of the Alleluias, and I, I figured out what the fingerings were for it, and I had my thumb hole in the back, and that was covered, and I blew in here. I had the four holes in the, in the, in the front, and with a combination of different fingers, now Alleluia is not a difficult song to play, more difficult on this. This instrument measures about an inch or an inch and a half. It is extremely tiny. It is extremely small. But it does play per in perfect pitch for the key of C. I was amazed. Some of these, when I get these unusual instruments, I, I'll get a note from the company. I'll say, Pat, this is about in the key of C. This is around the key of C. In other words, it's not perfect. It may be in the key of C, but it may be a little off. And that's part of the charm of the instrument. But this one is right on in the key of C, and I can play it in the key of C. And this one was made in Hong Kong. So that's this. You can see how clear it is. Now I've stood before a whole church with an instrument the size of an inch.
and played the Alleluia and done it on this instrument and done an in pitch in the key of C. And everybody sits there amazed because they don't think the thing can play. It actually plays very well. A lot of these ocarinas play very well, but the difficulty is you've got to get used to the fingerings. It's not like a recorder or a clarinet or a saxophone where you left hand on top, right hand on the bottom, and the keys go down. This is what most woodwinds are, but you have to fool around with your, your fingers here and which ones go up and which ones go down and they're just on each side of each other and it makes a, it makes just for a little difficulty in terms of learning how to play something. So when I was going to do some solo work on it, which I really wanted to do because I wanted people to see how a little instrument can play well, I used to write the the, uh, the the fingerings on top of the notes, two left, one right, or whatever it was for that note. And so therefore, I had it all down pat, and I could play the whole Alleluia just with a little instrument like this. Now, I don't know if I could do it if there was an orchestral or piano background to it, but the pitch is so clear, and the instrument is so clear, and you can really get a, it's like a powerhouse of sound when you play it as a single instrument, uh, that I think I could have done it with some kind of an orchestral background. Now, the next one I'm going to show you, and I mentioned to her when they got to the United States, it was redesigned, and it was called a sweet potato ocarina. I have a couple of these. This is a sweet potato ocarina. Now, to play this, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes on it, tone holes on it. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. There is a seventh one. And to hold it, you do the same as you would with a recorder. Left hand on top and right hand, and this is the seventh one right here, on the bottom. You know, and then this would be an extra place where you could put your, your little finger just as a place to put it. It's not a key. And in the back, you have two areas. I believe that one of them is for the key and the other one acts as a labium. You can look at that, you can see right through it. This hole on top, this tone hole on top, goes right straight through and you can see it through the key on the other side. So I would take and play it with the three hands, here, three fingers here and the thumb naturally goes up there and then on the bottom, one, two, three, four. It's not, it doesn't play very well. But it does have sounds to it. Now, I understood, I read someplace where the military uh, in World War I made a ton of these. And the reason they did it, they gave it to every soldier. And the purpose behind it was to make sure that everybody had one so they could kind of entertain themselves with it. And so they passed them out to every soldier. So I imagine in people's attics somewhere, there's a ton of these hanging around. See, the top doesn't really come out. And the finger stretches or something on it on the left hand side. Well, this gives you an idea. It's an octave instrument, plays in the key of C, could play a little better if it was designed a little better, but this is it. It's the ocarina, the sweet potato ocarina, which is popular in the United States. I have two of them, but I would never do a solo on them. The quality of the sound really isn't that good. Now, here we have a harmonica. It's not an ocarina, but it is a harmonica. And the reason I want to show it to you is the smallest one you'll ever see. 
It has four notes. It has four places to breathe in and out. It's perfect in the key of C. The key is perfect. It's a Hona. It was made in Germany. It's more or less a novelty item. I've never seen an, an, anything like it since. I may, maybe it was an advertising gimmick. But you can see the holes where the air goes in and out. If I hold it just right, I should hold it on this side, I guess. There. Now, you can see there are like four holes there. And if I have to play it, I'll put it on this side. It sounds just like a regular harmonica. It's a C major chord. You don't have four in a row. You don't have four notes in a row. It, it, it plays like a chord. At any rate, this is a honer and it's a harmonica. I keep it in with the ocarinas because it is unusual. I've had people try to tell me that they wanted it and I should give it to them. And I said, no, I don't think so. It is going to stay right with me. It's called Lily Lady. They put a name on it, Lily Lady. But it is a harmonica and it does play perfectly in the key of C. One full octave, but only in the chords. That would be C, E, G, and C, not the whole scale. So there is that one. Now the last one I'm going to show you is a puny tune. This is the puny tune. This is designed a little different. It is an ocarina, but it's designed a little different. It only has four holes, not the usual six. And you hold them with your left hand on one side, your right hand on the other side, and your thumbs go in the back, but there's no tone hole in the back. So this is the puny tune. And you notice that it has a good quality tone and fairly loud. It's a small one. I think they make two of them, but this is a small one. This is in the key of G. And it's a really nice little instrument. Now, I wanted to get another one, but I never did get another one. This is the smallest one. This one has a book that goes with it. I brought in a few pages, but I didn't bring in the whole book. It's a small book, and it's called The Care and Feeding of the Puny Tune. Now, the Puny Tune has been shown, it's, it's sketches of it, to show it like it's like a pet, like it's an animal, and we'll show that right here. If you can see that, this is the little guy standing up. This is the little guy, and he's walking. Here he is here, he looks almost like a pig, and here he is here, he looks almost like a fish. So what they've done is they've taken the puny tune, and they've made like a little animal, a little pet out of him, and written a book about it, saying here is the care and feeding of the puny tune. And what it actually is, I'll put this down for now, uh, by the way, the little slit on the, on the top to put your air in, the little labium is right here, and then you have your fingers, just four. With these four, uh, with these four holes, two on each side, you can get about 13 notes out of it. And that was what it was designed for. Now, um, let's see. I wanted to show you a couple of pages from the book that they set. They say it's the care and feeding of the puny tune. I'm going to put this up for a second. It really is a list of songs and the fingering charts as to how you, pay, uh, how you play it. Now in this, he's like got little eyes and he's walking forward and he's a little animal. This is his legs and his arms. The Camp Town Races is a song. It shows you all of the holes that you have to press open, and it gives you the uh, 
uh, the, the uh, talk about, you know, the verse, what the words are to the verse, and if you follow that, you can play that song. Now, of course, it doesn't show you what the timing is or anything like that, but it's like a fingering chart for those notes. Now, on this one here, the, I had to put them on a photocopier and get them larger, otherwise it would be too hard to see them, which is one of the reasons I didn't bring in the book today. But on this particular one, he looks like a little pig. He's got a little tail there, his legs and so forth. And this is O oh, Susanna. And this is the fingering chart for O oh, Susanna. You put your, your, your fingers down, you leave some open. If the little circles are black, those uh, all go down. Where the little circles are light, you don't put your fingers down on them. And you can play O oh, Susanna. It has a lot of those old time uh, songs and they have pictures of this uh, little instrument, the puny tune, on each page. And it's several pages long. I just wanted you to get a chance to see it. So the ocarinas are, uh, I'll put this back up, uh, the ocarinas are small for the most part, small, kind of roundish. They have usually about four to six holes. Some of them have a little more, but not much more and they can play usually about an octave. Some of them are on pitch, or some of them are a little, maybe a little off. Some of them have better tones. If you get some that are larger and more expensive, and you can pay a lot of money for a good one, you can get really gorgeous tones out of them, and it's tones that I'm not able to replicate on any of my other instruments. And as I said, I have about 300, more than 300 instruments in my collection, and they can't do it. They just can't do it. And you can see when I do blow in some of these, the quality of the tone, <whistles> it actually is very good. And they, they produce a lot of sound for the size of them because they're all small. A lot of ocarinas are really small. Little larger ones even get more sound. But this gives you a chance to see what the ocarinas are. They were probably created in Asia, in China. They may be the first kind of woodwind instruments that existed. They existed at first like a whistle. They had a little air chamber, and you blew in and blow in, and it's like a whistle. And then they got them so that they had holes for finger holes, so you could get different notes out of them. They're a fascinating little instrument. If I could afford it, I'd get some real expensive ones because they do play beautifully. They play solo work beautifully. I've done solo work on some of these as they are, and they're very, very small, but I can still do it. So I'm going to close it here. We'll be doing something else next time. Please join me then.